So I'm now joined by Kimberly Tapley from Project Dragonfly. Kimberly, can you talk about what Project Dragonfly is? Project Dragonfly was started a couple of years ago, um, very shortly after my sister completed suicide. And um, I wanted some kind of uh, avenue for me to be able to figure out a way to reach out to people so they didn't feel as alone in a situation that they might find themselves in like I was finding myself in. And um, it's transformed over the last couple of years, and it's really about people sharing stories and talking about things in their lives, whether it's becoming a parent or a change in job or like very much what's going on right now, um, something that's transformed their lives. Um, either in a positive or a negative way, but really Project Dragonfly is, is using them as, I guess, teachable moments so that people can share their stories, because that's really what it's all about. And, you know, what it, why is it important for people to talk about how they're feeling right now? Many of us are, like yourself, working from home or isolated, and yeah. we're not connecting physically with people the way we normally do. Um, I'm in a unique position because I work in radio, so I'm used to being able to connect with people um, without being physically or geographically close to them. Um, and when this all started, I'm, um, I'm a social introvert, so I enjoy my solitude. Some people, in order to get energy or to um, center themselves, they unplug from the world. They talk about going off the grid and that kind of a thing. Other people, when they need to recharge, they plug into the world. Um, so I became very aware of this because working for my home office, I have my daughter and my two-year-old granddaughter living with me. Two people that are very social, a, a young child that can see her friends outside but can't go out and play with them, um, and my daughter who also is involved very much socially. And uh, a lot of people are saying, you know, for people that are used to going out and and uh, interacting with people, this is going to be really tough for them. It's true. But then there's people like me who like the quiet and who like the the, the space um, and don't like the white noise. So you've got introverts and extroverts and socially um, people that find social interaction necessary and people that like to socially unplug. And they're all being put into situations where they're not necessarily, it's completely out of their, not comfort zone per se, but um, what their what their comfort level is, um, and it's even doubly tough because these are people that we either live with um, or that are very important to us. Uh, I had a a really interesting thing, and it happened when the blackout happened several years ago, where they were saying, you know, in nine months, it's going to be a lot of babies being born, and and I kind of looked at it from the introvert perspective, which was there's also going to be a lot of potentially troubled relationships and divorces and it's not that's not something that I'm smiling about or laughing about but it's just right now we all need to to take a deep breath because we all have developed different coping mechanisms based on coping with the things that we know and we all have certain ways of dealing with things um, as things unfold we have no point of reference for this right now. Um, and I've worked with the Canadian Mental Health Association um, with regards to Project Dragonfly and, and things like PTSD and social anxiety and depression. And now more than ever, we really need to be able, through our computers, through our text messages, through our phones, connecting. Just because we're geographically and physically separated, we're all in isolation together. There are really interesting and cool ways to do that. And with me being a writer, one of my ways is to tell stories. And that's what I'm encouraging everybody to do. We used to hate the whole keep a journal at school. Um, but we all, when we were kids, at least my generation, it was a dear diary kind of thing. It doesn't have to be work, but let those feelings out and really reach out and communicate with the people um, make a point of making contact, um, not just with the people that you're with, figure out how to, a new way of communicating, but also write feelings down, share them. It's really important right now. People are going to start to have some really interesting mental health challenges um, with regards to emotions like fear, um, especially with fear. 
And you you mentioned your writing and you've written for years and yes. have, have done a lot of sharing about your experiences as a mom, through divorces, through single parenthood. Just one divorce. But... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <don't ask> <laughs> well, one you divorce, know, it's Sorry. been... Yeah, and it's been over 15 years that uh, I've been doing that, and um, and that's my outlet. That's my that's my catharsis. That's how I processed all of those things, and it helped me not feel so alone. Um, and it was really gratifying because I would get emails and people stopping me on the streets and and all of that kind of thing, saying thank you for helping me feel like I'm not so alone. Um, and that's really important in this time. Uh, and the timing is interesting because a couple of weeks ago I was um, told that the, the uh, newspaper was uh, reconfiguring some things and um, that my last column on Friday the 13th was actually my last column. And so I've been trying to figure out in the midst of all of this chaos how I can be selfishly motivated have that outlet in some form or another but i think that right now there's a lot of people that need that sense of community need that sense of there's people that understand what they're going through and that they're not going through it alone so starting at the end of march which is um actually march 27th uh in the interim, for right now, what I'm going to be doing is I'll will be publishing a, a weekly blog post on the Project Dragonfly website until I can figure out a way um, and and decide whether or not that outlet or that forum is going to change. But for now, um, starting on the 27th of March, there will be a weekly blog post at projectdragonfly.ca, and it'll be under the heading Kim Bits and Cattails. On days that I, I feel the need to uh, share my feelings uh, more so than others, I will maybe make multiple posts. Um, the Facebook, uh, sorry, the Facebook page for Project Dragonfly is much more interactive, so that's where it will be having multiple posts on a daily basis. The goal is to take the weekly column that everybody's grown to love and put that into a different place kind of like what we're all doing with our lives right now still get what we need but find different ways of doing it so i invite everybody to visit projectdragonfly.ca the first uh the first blog post the first online column will be up on march 27th perfect well thank you for sharing with us today and good luck with your blog and project dragonfly and i think it'll be very comforting for many people certainly during this uncertain time and the importance of of understanding yeah. what other people are going through is really really important that we all show compassion and empathy and try to be um, supportive of different things and different personalities yes. as you've talked about because not all of us are wired the same. We, I think, are all learning it very quickly, and um, a lot of us are turning to social media, but um, it all has to do with intent and perception, and there's something really powerful um, when it comes to voice and when it comes to words. Um, and just before I finish, I just want to invite anybody that is looking for an ear or looking for some advice. I'm not professional, but the whole hashtag of we're all in this together, we really are. Um, and I invite anybody that if they want to start a conversation to send an email as well to Project Dragonfly at Rogers.com. And um, we can start a conversation that way. I'm, I'm here for everybody as well. 